everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss Newton CG and Newton Krylov methods. Um, which <clears throat> will be basically, these will be the methods I sort of uh, prefer. I think there is a good argument to use them in the context of inverse problems, but I'll, at the end I'll, sh I'll just discuss a few more and then we'll move on from optimization for now. Uh, we might circle back to it um, depending on what I plan to do in the future, but <clears throat> for now this will this is sort of my favorite method. I think it's a clever approach um, to the problem. And uh, without further ado, uh, CG stands for conjugate gradient. If you haven't seen this before, um, it's an iterative solver for a system of the form AX equals B, where um, it's guaranteed to work when A is a symmetric positive definite matrix, which we can't necessarily, um, so the Hessian will be symmetric, but it's not necessarily positive definite. Um, and so we will propose a modified version of CG um, for, for our problem. So the main idea with CG is that you can get an error term you're basically looking for the spectrum of A, because if I can recover the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of a matrix, then implicitly I have the action of the matrix on any vector. And so in the end, you can, uh, there's a theorem that says that the norm of the error um, goes as a polynomial um, at the ith iteration. Um, it's related to this polynomial here as a function of each of the um, eigenvalues. And so at the ith iteration, you get a best fit of the spectrum of A with a polynomial of order I. Um, and so an important thing here is that it's going to, this polynomial is weighted by the lambdas here. So, in this minimization problem, this auxiliary minimization problem, it weighs the large eigenvalues more than the lower ones. So, these at, the, at low iteration number, I'm matching large eigenvalues first. Which, if we go back to our discussion regarding Morisov discrepancy principle um, and regularization, this is natural for us because if we look at the system that we solve for the, the step PK here, um, and let's multiply by this regularization matrix R, then R inverse HK will still have this uh, exponential eigenvalue decay um, that we saw with the heat equation. And so after only a certain number of iterations, I'm going to match this within uh, my regularization. Um, so, so this is what the spectrum will look like, right? It'll have exponential decay, but it'll be shifted up by this um, parameter alpha or regularization parameter. And so after a certain number of iterations, you're not going to gain much. And so the idea here is to cut off uh, the actual solving of the linear system AX equals B whenever I hit this point. I don't want to actually get all the eigenvalue information because at the end of the day we have noise in our data and so we can't fit it anyway. We, we're going to be fitting noise. Um, so um, that being said, if, if this is all foreign to you with CG, um, you can see a detailed um, derivation of the actual CG algorithm in this source here, conjugate gradient, without the agonizing pain. So I won't get into that here. You can just think of it as just a tool we're using that's an iterative solver. So one other thing that I want to point out is we're using an iterative solver here. So we don't actually need to compute this Hessian. And then in the next few videos, I'll talk about why this Hessian is so expensive. So we don't actually want to form HK. We only want to get its action on a vector P. So we can think of this as a literal linear transformation rather than a matrix because we're not going to form the matrix anyway. So here is the Newton CG algorithm. 
we're solving for our search direction pk at the, at the kth iteration. And I'm going to go, so we sort of have two loops here that we're going through. So I'll go over the outer loop first. So this is the actual where I'm iterating in model space, not my search direction pk. So we give an initial model and search direction of the model. While you know we haven't hit some termination condition um, or you know a max number of iterations, we get the gradient, we get the Hessian, and again this you can think of as a function or a lambda expression. We're not we only want its action on a vector, not actually to explicitly form the matrix. And we set some tolerance. I'll get into that later. And then we call this modified CG algorithm to get our search direction, and then we just backtrack. Uh, we use back, backtracking line search in that direction, um, just like we talked about in the previous videos, until we hit a convergence criterion. So the only thing that changes here is really how we're choosing this PK. Everything else is pretty much the same. So here's modified CG. So again, this CG step I won't go over. Um, come to this source here if you're curious. It's not too bad, but uh, I don't want to waste too much time on it. So the main, this... These two points here, our termination conditions, are the key points. So this first termination condition here says, is negative curvature detected? Okay, and negative curvature we don't want because we want a local minimum, right? So if we're detecting negative curvature, we're either not, uh, either our quadratic is not a good approximation to the function, or we're not in a basin of attraction of a minimum anyway. Uh, so once we detect negative curvature, because remember this algorithm is on positive definite matrices. So this is, this is actually computed in the algorithm anyways. So if it's detected, use the previous iteration and quit. Uh, because now we're fitting things we don't want. Otherwise, if we hit the tolerance, we also break. Because um, this right here, this ends up being the residual, right? Uh, just add GK onto the other side. We want, we want this to be close to zero. And, and that's, that's basically all that Newton CG is. This is how we get superlinear convergence in our algorithm. So if we choose eta k, oh, so sorry. So back down to this outer loop. This is how we're choosing eta k. It's, um, this minimum here is just like, hey, when the gradient's large, we want to still make sure we solve the system reasonably well is all that's going on there. Um, we choose it as some power where that power is between 0 and 1. And the reason is this. If we choose it like that, we're going to get gk to the 1 plus alpha is really our termination condition here. And so when alpha equals 0, we're solving this. Our convergence rate is like gk. And so that's linear convergence. That's like gradient descent. When alpha is 1, that's gk squared. <laughs> And that is like Newton. Oh, sorry. When alpha is a half, we get gk to the three halves. This is super linear. So this is more like quasi Newton. <laughs> but the idea here is that. We don't want to solve this exactly because we actually don't know if we're close to the minimum. And so when we're far away, we actually want it to look like gradient descent to some, to, to some extent we want it to look like gradient descent. But when we hone in and we get a small gradient, at that point we want to get it solved closer and closer to an exact value, right? Because th when this is small, uh, to the three halves is going to be smaller than to the first power. 
And so we get this superlinear convergence anyway. So in general, the behavior of Newton CG is the following. One, when we're far away, Newton CG behaves like gradient descent. We get us we we get a dis, we get a descent direction. In that we, yeah, in that we can guarantee we get a we get a descent direction through backtracking. When we're close, we solve the system with higher accuracy. And so we get superlinear convergence, even though it's not quadratic. Um, it's still super linear, so it's super fast. So one other thing I want to point out here is that there's actually there's a trade-off when you do this, right? You can choose whatever alpha you want, depending on... Because obviously you want alpha equals 1 if you're really close, if you're confident in that. Um, but of course, you, you, know, you don't actually know what the optimization landscape looks like. <laughs> But notice that when, if we take gk squared, the more iterations we're going to have to go here, right? Because if this term gets smaller, we have to, we have to iterate within modified CG more. Um, but the trade-off is that, well, if we expect quadratic convergence, well, that means we have less iterations within this outer loop. On the flip side, if we choose alpha equals zero here, this is a bigger number, so we have less iterations here, but gradient descent converges slower in this sense, so we might need more iterations out here. So there's a trade-off between the two. And that's why this is this right here is a good it's a it's a good trade-off between those two as well in terms of commutation. Um, so hopefully that motivates Newton CG. Um, and then as far as new, oh gosh, what did I do here? Places. Okay. For Newton, uh, Newton Krylov, just replace CG with your favorite Krylov subspace method. So CG is a Krylov subspace method, and so um, probably the most famous Krylov subspace method other than CG is probably GM res. So, but it's the same idea. You're not exactly solving the um, matrix equation because, well, you don't actually know if the quadratic is, is a good approximation anyway. So why, why waste all your computational resources on solving it super accurately? But... When you get close, then use then use your the computational resources because you'll expect this crazy fast convergence. And then as just uh, one other caveat, um, these are just two classes of methods um, that I want to point out um, that might be of use outside of Newton Krylov. So there's trust region methods um, and LBFGS. So LBFGS is a type of quasi Newton method. And for more methods, um, look up the book um, No Suit All and Write Numerical Optimization. This is largely where I've gotten uh, a lot of this stuff in this optimization uh, section anyways. So LBFGS is a good one to know. It stands for Limited Memory BFGS, and BFGS is the name of the four authors. Um, this is a quasi-Newton method. It approximates the Hessian directly. Um, trust region methods sort of take a, uh, you know, you have a region where you trust the uh, approximation of the function, and then based on certain conditions, you either shrink this trust region or you make it bigger because there's always a trade-off of, uh, you know, 
you want to see the whole optimization landscape, but it's too computationally intensive to you know, actually see it all, right? So there's this trade-off, and that's the idea behind a uh, trust region method. Um, but this book, Numerical Optimization by uh, uh, no suit all and, and, and write is a great resource. It's sort of a standard uh, textbook on this topic as well. But for the time being, uh, I'll move forward assuming that you guys are fans of Newton CG, Newton Krylov, uh, like me. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And in the next video, I'll, I'll hope to, we'll sort of transition out of optimization back into sort of inverse theory um, uh, stuff. So thank you guys for watching.